Behind the monstrous Red Bulls, there was this season's shining light, Fernando Alonso. His third place finish in Saudi Arabia was his 100th trip to the podium, and didn't he look ecstatic to be there? After all the years of pain and suffering we've had to watch Alonso struggle through, it's fantastic to see him reinventing himself and looking as joyful as he did all those years ago at Renault. That was until he got a 10 second penalty after the race for something that happened on lap 18. And then, after handing the trophy over to George Russell, they rescinded the penalty anyway. It was a complete mess, and despite George sounding like he was a model sportsman, it might have been his team behind it in the first place. So did Mercedes snitch on Aston Martin? And does the FIA need to make rule changes to stop this happening for a third race in a row? Let's check it out. So let's start out with the actual penalty and how Fernando was almost robbed of his 100th podium. Then we'll talk about how it might have been Mercedes' fault. Fernando Alonso was finally confirmed as third place finisher at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix after Aston Martin successfully appealed his post-race 10 second penalty. The Spaniard was initially punished when stewards decided a rear jack was illegally in contact with his car when he was serving an earlier penalty for a grid box infringement. But his team successfully argued there were previous examples of drivers not being penalized in such circumstances. The stewards agreed and overturned their original verdict. After the penalty had been given, Twitter went mental with people trying to find examples of rear jacks touching the back of cars while penalties were being taken, and in the short amount of time Aston Martin had to appeal the penalty, they managed to find seven. I feel sorry for whichever Aston Martin team member spent roughly three hours looking at Formula 1 cars taking penalties to find examples. Alonso was extremely critical of the sport's governing body, telling Sky Sports F1 after the race, I was on the podium. I did pictures, I took the trophy, I celebrated, and now I have apparently 3 points less. I don't have 15, I have 12. I think it is more FIA poor show. You cannot apply a penalty 35 laps after the pit stop. They had enough time to inform about the penalty. If I knew that, maybe then I open up 11 seconds to the car behind. Today we didn't put on a good show for our fans. I know the team is trying to review it with the stewards now because we didn't understand fully the second penalty. He also said, in a very sportsmanlike manner, that he feels sorry for Russell, his fans and Mercedes sponsors for missing out on images on the podium. That was probably before he heard the rumors that it was Mercedes who got in the penalty in the first place. The U-turn in the FIA's decision raised question marks over why it had taken them so long to investigate an incident that occurred relatively early in the race. After all, he served the five-second penalty he was penalized for serving incorrectly at 5.33 p.m. UK time and it wasn't until an hour and 11 minutes later that the FIA announced he was getting a 10-second penalty for serving it incorrectly. With two laps remaining, Mercedes George Russell was told there could be another penalty on the way for Alonso. Is he getting the penalty or not, Russell responded. I'm pushing like a madman at the minute. Russell was the man with the most to gain from Alonso picking up a penalty. The Mercedes was no match for the Aston Martin on track. Fernando was just managing the gap at the end. The only way he could have picked up Alonso was through a penalty, and Mercedes thought they'd found a way to get him one. Remember that legendary Toto Wolf line? Uh, Michael, I just sent you an email, um, with the diagrams where the car should be. Did you receive that? At the 2021 Silverstone Grand Prix, Toto tried to defend Lewis Hamilton after he caused Max Verstappen's horrific crash by emailing Michael Massey mid-race with a diagram. Massey had the comedic genius to respond, Toto, I don't access my emails during the race, in the most unimpressed voice you can imagine. Apparently, the race directors did get Toto's email this time around, though. Sky Sports F1 pit lane reporter Ted Kravitz said, He got a penalty, but when you serve a penalty, you're not allowed to do any work on the car. The remote operations center, meaning the race stewards that work from FIA headquarters, had seen whether the guy at the back holding the rear jack had actually touched the car before the five-second penalty was served. At the time, they decided there was no real hard place to go with Aston Martin, that he hadn't touched the car, and even if he had, it was okay. If you watch the pit stop back, it's pretty clear that nothing is happening. He just has the jack in place ready to lift the car when the penalty is over, but Mercedes had something to say about that. Kravitz continued, But later on, another team that had something to gain, the rumor is Mercedes, but that is unconfirmed, complained and said, We think you need to take a further look at this because the Sporting Advisory Committee had said maybe you can't touch the back of the car with the rear jack. In the end, Aston Martin proved that that was complete rubbish. 
A combination of the minutes from the Sporting Advisory Committee meeting that Mercedes thought had said you can't touch the car with the jack, and all the evidence of other teams doing it and not getting penalised meant that Alonso's penalty was overturned. And I'm pretty sure that we can all agree that that was the right outcome. Fernando Alonso definitely saw the funny side of it once he had his 100th podium reinstated, replying to George Russell's celebratory tweet in the most perfect way. The Mercedes social media team also decided to make light of the situation, though their race team were probably far less impressed by the FIA's decision. Teams sending evidence of each other's rule breaches to the FIA is nothing new, so let's move past Mercedes and instead talk about everything that was wrong with how this situation went and what needs doing about it. The race at Jeddah was won by Red Bull's Sergio Perez, ahead of his teammate Max Verstappen, but Alonso delivered another superb drive to seal third for Aston Martin. However, the place was not confirmed until more than five hours after the finish, and only then after a series of U-turns from the FIA. The stewards were happy with how Alonso served his initial five-second penalty during the race, but it was in the last lap or two that Mercedes sent over the information that they thought meant that Alonso would be penalised. They waited as long as possible because they wanted to make sure that George Russell could get close enough to secure the podium, and ideally Lewis Hamilton fourth place as well, though he failed at that. If they would have sent evidence earlier, Alonso might have been warned it was coming and been able to open up a 10 second gap to avoid losing his place. In fact, he was confident of it, saying, If they told me I had a 10 second penalty, I would have pushed more. It was a control race. A sneaky move by Mercedes, that one. The first issue with the whole situation was that there was obviously a large grey area in the rules that the FIA didn't have an answer for. The decision of the stewards to hear and grant the right of review by the competitor was a result of new evidence regarding the definition of working on the car, for which there were conflicting precedents, and this has been exposed by this specific circumstance, it said in a statement. The rules and questions raised over why Alonso's stop was initially adjudged as correct and then not re-examined until the final lap will now be addressed at the next F1 Sporting Advisory Committee meeting, which takes place on Thursday. A clarification will then be issued before the Australian Grand Prix, which is held in Melbourne in two weeks. That's excellent. I don't care if the rear jackman is or isn't allowed to touch the car and nor do you. I just want it to be one way or the other, not both and neither at the same time. The bigger issue here is how the penalty was issued. Alonso said it himself, he feels sorry for Russell, his fans and Mercedes sponsors for missing out on images on the podium. If the penalty had been legit, then that's a moment taken away from George Russell and the Mercedes team. That's really disappointing. More importantly, it really sucks as fans. If you hadn't already realized, I'm glad to see Alonso and Aston Martin being competitive. It's shaken up the grid and brought something new and interesting to the sport after years of Ferrari, Red Bull and Mercedes dominance. I was so excited to watch him take the podium, but then when the FIA took it away after the race, it was just ridiculous. If the FIA had issued the penalty in a timely manner during the race, then Alonso could have done something to offset it. Like he said, he was just managing the race at the end. But by issuing it after the race, the FIA gave him no chance to respond to it at all. It's like VAR ruling out a goal in a football game after the full-time whistle. Not knowing about the infringement completely changes what happens for the rest of the game. In that football game, the team that scored may think they have the win wrapped up and play defensively, missing out on the chance to score again. In the same way, Alonso thought he had third place wrapped up so didn't push to open up a large enough gap to account for it. The most important takeaway from this for me is that issuing penalties after the race has finished just doesn't work. Put a time limit on it, give race control 5 minutes to issue a penalty otherwise nothing can be changed. Or 5 laps, it doesn't matter what you define it by, there just needs to be a limit on when they can award a penalty because what happened in Saudi Arabia was not fair competitively. What do you think of Mercedes' move, waiting till the race was almost over to protest? Dirty or genius? And what about the FIA's decision to issue the penalty so long after the race? Does it need changing or is the system fine as it is? Let us know your opinion in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.